thank you very much. Good afternoon. I am Nayra Vazquez and I'm glad to be one of the finalists for the PhD competition organized by Diamond. Um, the title of my thesis is Effects of Strain Rate and Adiabatic Heating on the Strain Induced Martin Cytic Phase Transformation in Austenitic Stainless Steels. I would say it's such a long title, so let's start with the last, with the last word. Um, we are surrounded by steel. It doesn't matter where we look at. From the first moment we uh, wake up in the morning, we can easily find either a, uh, an object or something that has a component made of steel. So the constant evolution of our society demands for better structure, better steels. But what do I mean by better steels? I mean, in improving the mechanical properties such as strength, ductility, or the hardening capabilities. And this has been um, uh, promoting the creation and the development of uh, more complex microstructures. This is the case for the TRIP steels. TRIP um, stands for transformation induced plasticity. And in these steels, the soft and the formable austenite transforms into a more uh, harder and stronger uh, modern site. And uh, uh, this is the main focus of my thesis. My, in, in my thesis, I'm working mostly with the metastable austenitic stainless steel that undergoes this phase transformation. Lots of efforts uh, are put into studying this trip effect. The Martin Stick phase transformation, <coughs> sorry, it's, uh, it's been seen that it's affected by both uh, temperature and strain rate. Increasing the temperature results in a much uh, uh, reduced trip effect. There is uh, less uh, Martin, size, uh, Martin size forming. And the same happens when we increase the strain rate. Higher strain rates results in uh, less amount of Martin size, and this all together has a clear effect on the mechanical properties of the, of the material. But this testing the, the, or checking the effect of temperature and strain rate might be uh, trivial or easy or maybe straightforward when we are testing at low uh, strain rates because the material is deforming under isothermal conditions. However, when we are testing at high, uh, at high strain rates, uh, there might be some uh, temperature increase due to a phenomenon called adiabatic heating, which will be explained further uh, later on. But basically, uh, this, uh, when we are testing at high strain rates, temperature and strain rate are couple. So I mentioned earlier that testing at high strain rates results in less modern site. It's been assumed that as higher um, as uh, that high strain rates, the, the modern site formation is suppressed by this uh, temperature increase due to the adiabatic heating. But could it be possible that the strain rate itself has an effect on this modern city phase transformation? Therefore, understanding the microplasticity of the trip steel is key to provide better steels. Keeping this in mind, the following research questions were uh, the main focus of my PhD work. And these are that, uh, is it possible to uncouple the effects of strain rate and adiabatic heating on the phase transformation? If so, uh, what is the effect? What is the individual effect of strain rate? And what is the individual effect of the adiabatic heating on this uh, phase transformation? And finally, what is the value of the taylor quinney coefficient during the plastic deformation, which will be explained also in a bit. So I mentioned that the main focus or, or the main material of my thesis is this uh, metastable austenitic stainless steel, the 301, and uh, together with it um, as a reference material, the 316 was used also because it had a similar initial microstructure, uh, but it doesn't undergo this uh, phase transformation. The materials were tested in tension at a wide rate of uh, strain rates uh, for which uh, several testing devices were required and this can be classified in these three main categories. Universal testing uh, machine, the fast hydraulic actuator from the Ohio State University and finally the tensile split Hopkinson bar. During the mechanical tests, optical infrared high speed photography was used to characterize both strain and temperature. To combine or the combination of these um, of these techniques um, can provide very meaningful information uh, about the material behavior at high strain rate. For example, in the image on the right, uh, we can see how the strain localizes uh, along the way, uh, along the gauge length, but also the temperature increases uh, significantly also in the same spots where uh, the strain localizes. As mentioned earlier. 
testing at high strain rates involves or might involve a temperature increase due to this adiabatic heating. This heating, of course, when the heat generated by the plastic deformation cannot dissipate fast enough from the material to the surroundings, and this results in, a, in, in an increase of temperature. The fraction of this plastic work converted into heat has been defined as the Taylor Quinney coefficient, and uh, it's something that uh, uh, it's related to one of the questions uh, of also my, my PhD thesis. So how can we analyze the individual effect of a strain rate? In a monotonic test, we're used to uh, keep a constant strain rate during the, the whole uh, test, either low or high. Uh, but in this test, in the strain rate jam test, the sample initially deforms at low strain rate, and after reaching a certain amount, user defined a uh, certain amount of deformation, the, te the, um, the strain rate is suddenly increased several uh, orders of magnitude. In order to do these tests, uh, some modifications were required in the tensile split Hopkinson bar, as you can see here in this uh, in the image. And also during this test, the full field measurement of strain uh, required two different um, imaging systems in order to allow uh, to analyze the strain at the low rate and at the high rate of the of the deformation. Furthermore, some of the tests also included an infrared camera in order to measure the full field temperature during this uh, high rate uh, portion of the test. To uncouple the effects, the individual effects of the adiabatic heating, some of the specimens were heated at low rate uh, in a controlled manner in order to reproduce the thermal conditions uh, due to the adiabatic heating. This means that the specimen was heated with the same rate with respect to strain at which the, the specimen would um, heat up in a high rate test under adiabatic conditions. With this procedure, the test at low uh, strain rate can have macroscopically the uh, similar conditions, thermal conditions, as the test at high strain rate. Let's start the results section with an overview of uh, the stress strain curve of both materials. The dashed line corresponds to the tests that are um, done at the quasi static strain rate. And it can be seen that for the 301, the metastable steel that undergoes the phase transformation, uh, the, this curve shows a very distinct S shape that disappears as we increase the, the strain rate. The strain hardening curve shows how the material is uh, strain hardening very strongly at the lowest strain rate. And this effect is also uh, is decreased at a higher strain rate. On contrast, uh, for the stable uh, 316 steel, this does not happen and uh, because it doesn't have the, it doesn't undergo the phase uh, transformation. Many scientists have uh, studied this um, behavior and this S shape has been proven to be the consequence of the of the modern of the modern size formation and therefore increasing the strain rate decreases the phase transformation rate and consequent consequently decreases the strain hardening rate of the material. This plot uh, here shows the stress strain curve of the specimen deforming in adiabatic condition from the from the previous uh, uh, slide, but it, this plot also shows the corresponding temperature uh, increase with respect to the strain. It's important to point out that the black curves correspond to the stable austenitic steel, and as the uh, for the highest uh, strain rate, both uh, stress and temperature increase are uh, higher than than one, uh, than the ones for the lower strain rate. However, the metastable stainless steel does not show such uh, behavior because as you can see here um, highlighted with the circle, the temperature increase for the strain rate, for the lower strain rate is higher than that for the higher strain rate. Um, this is a very important fact because um, from one hand, the phase transformation is an exothermal reaction, which means it's it's uh, uh, contributing to the temperature increase, and also that um, the, phase, uh, the phase transformation rate is higher at the uh, lower strain rates. And this can have a very important effect on the Taylor Quinney coefficient. Thanks to the simultaneous me measurements of strain and temperature, the Taylor Quinney coefficient was calculated. And uh, while uh, for the black curve, the stable 316 still, it can be seen that um, seems to be non-dependent from uh, of strain or strain rate. 
this um, this uh, coefficient that has been uh, calculated shows a high difference for the two different uh, strain rates. Therefore, um, it should be con this Taylor Quini coefficient calculated should be considered carefully as there are other heats of uh, other sources of heat contributing to the temperature increase. Um, the strain rate jumps uh, aim to uncouple the effect of the of the strain rate on the phase transformation. On the left hand side, we can see the the monotonic uh, tests, low and high, uh, low and high strain rate, and these uh, subsequent uh, plots are the jumps performed at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 of true strain, and it can be seen that the strain hardening rate drops right after the strain rate jump. One could say, okay, we have just entered into the dynamic regime and therefore it can be uh, the adiabatic heating uh, component. However, the thermal data showed that the temperature increase reached a, a, a maximum of 12 degrees after a very short, uh, well, uh, 0 0.05 of true deformation. And this is a very modest uh, temperature increase. Therefore, there might be the possibility that actually the strain rate has an effect by itself on the phase transformation. In this section, the results from the individual effects of the, of the, of the, uh, sorry, of the adiabatic heating will be briefly introduced. <clears throat> In order to do so, we will focus on the strain hardening rate. And we can see that the thick line corresponds to the quasi-static test at the room temperature. The black uh, thinner line corresponds to the, uh, the test at high strain rate, uh, high strain rate whose uh, thermal conditions we want to reproduce the one here, and the test um, that uh, was uh, re that in which was uh, done at a low rate, but uh, with the external heating is shown with the plot of the with the squares. It's very important. Uh, it's it's uh, very interesting to see this that for the two tests at the same strain rate, but different thermal conditions, the difference on the strain hardening rate is not that much. But uh, um, I personally expected to see that uh, if uh, the strain rate was, I, sorry, if the adiabatic heating was the only responsible of the uh, differences on, or, or the strain hardening behavior, then this other core would drop much, uh, much more. Uh, however, I, I think it's uh, clearly, uh, can be clearly seen that uh, this curve is much higher than the one of the specimen that was supposed to be uh, that had the similar uh, thermal conditions and therefore the bulk adiabatic heating alone cannot fully explain the effect of the strain rate on the strain hardening behavior, behavior of the material. Uh, also some uh, microstructural analysis uh, revealed that the effect of strain rate, uh, that, that the strain rate itself affects on the nucleation of the of the marin site. Recalling the research questions, it was concluded that uh, yes, the effect of strain rate and adiabatic heating can be uncoupled. Uh, regarding the what is the effect of the strain rate, uh, it was concluded that the strain rate seems to have a direct effect on the phase transformation rate and on the nucleation of the modern site. Regarding the, the effect of the adiabatic heating alone, uh, it was concluded that the temperature increase at the microscopic level due to the adiabatic heating is modest and therefore the, the the decrease of the trip effect at higher strain rates is not only a consequence of the temperature increase from the adiabatic heating. Also, the taylor quinney coefficient was analyzed for these uh, stills, and it was concluded that uh, the martensitic phase transformation appears to have a substantial effect on the measured uh, taylor quinney coefficient, and uh, depending not notably on the strain and strain rate. My PhD thesis aimed for a uh, quantitative uh, measurement of the individual effect of strain rate and adiabatic heating on the phase uh, transformation, for which um, several uh, techniques were uh, used simultaneously. And therefore, I would say that uh, one of the big achievements from my PhD is uh, learning and applying new uh, methodologies and technologies to experimentally separate the effects of strain rate and adiabatic heating on the martensitic phase transformation. And I would like to point out that the thesis presented here is actually a compilation of four uh, research articles. Check the website. And um, I've been, I'm very happy to say that I've been uh, recently notified of uh, that I got uh, two graduation, well, 
one graduation award by the Tampere University and one recognition award by the Penti Kettunen Foundation. Last but not least, I would like to uh, acknowledge and thank my supervisors for their guidance and support during these years. Professor Mikko Hopka, Professor Belitapani Kwokkala and Dr. Mati Izakov as well as Professor Amos Gilad for hosting me at uh, his uh, laboratory at the Ohio State University and my former colleagues in Impact Research Group. Thank you very much. I hope you had a, you liked the presentation and let's see.